All right, so something's going on. Maybe I slept in a weird position. Maybe this is a dream I need to wake up from. Maybe somebody hit me on the head with a Mac Pro. Maybe I ate some bad sushi. I don't drink, but maybe somebody put something in my water. Maybe this is some multiverse Earth 2 type thing. I don't know, but I'm still using an iPhone mini as my main phone, and it's been about a year and a half. Yeah. Back in June 2021, I posted a video on the 12 mini. I had been using it for a little over a half a year at that point, and I kind of labeled that whole thing an experiment. I switched over from a 12 Pro Max, and I'm not entirely sure if I anticipated the mini line being my go-to for this long, but here we are. This is the iPhone 13 mini, quite literally a 12S mini, and I've had my SIM card in it since late last year. Fun fact, I actually ordered a 13 Pro Max. I changed my mind just like I did before, and I got the mini once again. And I'm not afraid to admit that this is indeed one of the best phones I have ever used. Granted, that's a long list of phones, but still. So why, 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 why the Mini? Simply put, as I've mentioned before, it's mainly the usability. This is the easiest phone to straight up use and manage. It's a one-handed device 100% of the time. You can hit every corner of the display without any hand gymnastics. It fits in every pocket, it doesn't weigh anything down, and it doesn't skimp on features when compared to its larger siblings. Now, the pros are definitely the better phones. That goes without saying. The biggest differences are the display refresh rate, the battery, the size obviously, and the cameras. Because iOS still doesn't take full advantage of the larger displays to further separate the software experience between these two phone sizes, which did irk me back when I had the 12 Pro Max. It's a complete missed opportunity in my eyes. Anyway, like I said, they don't cut a huge amount of corners here, so I'm still getting a top-of-the-line processor, a clean, high-quality OLED display, and top-of-the-line cameras. Everything positive I had to say about the 12 mini applies here as well. The two are nearly identical, but of course the 13 does have a few small yet meaningful upgrades. It's got a 10% larger battery, a 28% brighter display, it's got some tweaked camera sensors and software features, the base model starts with 128 gigabytes as opposed to 60 for, thank goodness, and it has the more powerful and more efficient processor. Oh, and the notch is slightly different too. So what has it been like using this as my main? Well, it's been good. It's such a nice combination of power, performance, and ease of use, and I've gotten so comfortable with this phone that for the majority of the time, I stopped using cases. I just have a real leather skin, which is aged nicely, by the way, on the back, and a tempered glass screen protector, both from Dbrand. Now, if I go jogging or hiking or anything like that, I use Dbrand's grip case because at that point, I don't care how comfy I've gotten with the phone, I don't trust myself to not drop this thing, so I gotta have that case. You can check all of this out as well as a bunch of other cool skins using the link below. Overall, the phone is quick and smooth, as smooth as a 60Hz display can get, and since iOS animations are butter anyway, I don't miss 120Hz as much. I still wish it was here, but I guess then the battery life wouldn't be as good. The cameras are great, I've gotten some real nice pictures and videos, nothing to really complain about here. I don't feel like I'm missing out on too much, I'm not a pro photographer anyway. I haven't messed around with the new modes that much either, but it's cool to see new stuff getting added. The speakers are pretty solid, but like with the battery, they can only be so good because of hardware limitations. I still deal with some of the same issues I dealt with on the 12 mini, every once in a while I'll have to toggle Wi-Fi to get it to work properly. The phone will occasionally lock up and freeze for a few seconds, but not as badly as before, which is good. There was this one instance where night shift started flickering uncontrollably, it was like the weirdest fever dream ever. I also switched back to the stock keyboard because Gboard got extremely glitchy and basically unusable out of nowhere, and I recently had some very frustrating issues getting video from the iPhone onto my MacBook. Tried using AirDrop, image capture, and photos, and nothing wanted to work right. What happened to Apple products just working? <laughs> anyway, uh, that stuff is great when it works, but an absolute pain in the butt when it doesn't even more so than other devices. Yeah, I said it. Now the 12 mini's battery was its biggest downfall and it's safe to say that that has been fixed here. It's actually good now. Not the best, not phenomenal, but good and I'll take it. 
it's definitely more reliable. I mean, Apple took this seriously and the phone is slightly thicker as a result. With light, very basic use, I can pull six plus hours of screen on time. With moderate use, five hours, and with super heavy use, around four hours. Starting the day at around seven or 8 a.m. and ending it around 11 p.m., depending on that day's usage, I'm either charging by dinner or by the time I hit the bed. Obviously, your mileage may vary, not everyone uses their phones the same way. Regardless, I don't have to worry about when I'll have to charge like I did with the 12 mini. I know what I'm getting and I know what to expect. Oh, and if you're a part of the iPhone battery health police, you'll be pleased to hear that as of right now, battery health is still sitting at 100%, so there you go. I've never really understood the angst surrounding battery health percentage, but whatever. Honestly, the battery is the biggest, most noticeable difference with this phone. Everything else is even more incremental or will be noticed more so in the future because of how good and future-proof this processor is. Now, I remember there being some talk before surrounding the mini, uh, the battery, and traveling less because of obvious reasons and how this would not be a viable option for those who do travel often now and for those who will eventually resume traveling more often. So when it comes to traveling, and I did only go on one trip with the 12 mini and took a little trip to Vegas, that's when I was hurting a bit. Having to charge the phone earlier in the day than usual, using a battery case to keep the thing alive so I could continue taking pictures and videos all day, and stream music and scroll around on social media while waiting for flights to take off, but I made it through, and my biggest takeaway wasn't just about the battery capacity, it was also about how nice it was carrying around a smaller, lighter device as it didn't get in the way at all, and if they could just fix the battery, then this could shift from an experiment to a possible long-term game changer for me. And well, since they did fix the battery, needless to say, up until right now at least, it just might have changed the game for me. As I've talked about in the past, with the Mini, the phone kind of switched roles in my daily life as more of a complementary device as opposed to the primary do-it-all device. And for example, I use a tablet a heck of a lot more now. I don't use my phone for as many tasks anymore. In the same way as a Pro Max would be better for media consumption and getting work done than a mini, a tablet would be better for media consumption and getting work done than a Pro Max. But this is clearly more psychological than anything when it comes to the Mini because in terms of specs, the Mini is more than capable of being that do-it-all workhorse for anybody. It's just tiny. But I love this footprint. It didn't take long for me to adapt and, well, I'm nearing two straight years of my SIM primarily being in a phone that nearly fits in the palm of my hand. There was even a moment where I binge watched an entire show when I was sick in bed and didn't think twice about how small the display was. It was fine. Unless that was just a symptom of my illness. All right, okay, <laughs> okay now I'm ad-libbing, what the heck? So I wouldn't say that this is the perfect phone size or anything, I would actually say that the perfect phone size hovers right around the iPhone 13 Pro and Pixel 5's footprints, and the numbers say that most people agree. I still love larger phones, but I've clearly started gravitating towards the smaller options provided they're just as powerful as the bigger variants. While this could very easily be the longest phase I've ever gone through, as times change, people change, situations change, preferences change. So what happened? <laughs> Simply put, say it with me now, it's mainly the usability. Consumers believe the phone is just too small, which as a side note is kind of funny to think about because well, this was my first phone. Yeah, yeah, I know those who are more experienced will say, well back in my day. Point being, this is where many of us came from in terms of size when talking about cell phones. Do you remember when manufacturers were doing everything possible to get their phone to be the thinnest or the smallest? The Razer was the thinnest for a while, then it was the NEC N703iU, you probably never heard of that. There was the Pantex C300 which was absolutely puny, then we started going in the opposite direction and phones like the original Galaxy Note which had a 5.3 inch display, a tenth of an inch smaller than the 13 mini display by the way, was considered considered massive, like dinner plate massive. And while we would see OEMs release compact phones throughout the years, the main flagships kept getting bigger. But like I said, things change. Smartphones are supercomputers in your pocket, and we can do just about everything on them. With streaming services and social media having taken over, you shouldn't be shocked to hear that over a 10 year period from 2011 to 2021, mobile media consumption grew an incredible 460%. That's going from 45 minutes of use per day to over 4 
hours a day. So it only makes sense that buyers go for phones with bigger screens, which obviously means increased visibility, so that their gaming, web browsing, and their Netflix, YouTube, and TikTok binging are more enjoyable. And on top of that, people are using their phones for productivity more than ever before as well. And doing so on a small device is possible, as previously mentioned, but to most, it isn't exactly ideal. Not everyone wants another device like a tablet to carry around. So I can totally understand how this phone is way too small for most people. Unless you factor in pure, plain perception. Question, what kind of bear is best? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Sorry. Question, when's the last time you saw an iPhone mini in the wild? I'll wait. That's what I thought. Remember, status symbols are a real thing. And well, an iPhone mini isn't as cool as a Pro or Pro Max. This phone ain't stealing your girl. And I feel like when people see the word mini, they see it as being significantly inferior to the other variants. And they believe it to be smaller than it actually is. On top of that, it got completely overshadowed by the other phones in the lineup. So maybe there should have been a separate event for it. I don't know. Unless you've tried a mini for yourself, you may or may not understand that over time, the the mini actually feels more like a phone and the larger phones feel more like mini tablets. To me, this is kind of closer to natural. Phones have just gotten so big and we've adapted to that. Perhaps users forgot how great small phones are because we don't get ones this powerful very often. I genuinely feel that if the marketing was executed differently and if it wasn't such a crazy time in the world when the first iteration was released, it could have changed how people view this phone for the better and the sales wouldn't have been so poor. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Now I know it may sound like I'm actively trying to convince you to completely change your mind here on the spot. I'm not trying to do that. Heck, I'm not even 100% sure if I'm sticking with a mini long term. I just wish... <laughs> I just want to shed light on the fact that it is possible to switch to this from something much larger. And I wish more people would give it a chance. I highly recommend you at least try one, and if it doesn't work out, no problem. This phone isn't for everyone. There is so much noise going on outside, people are starting up their big old trucks, the wind is blowing. oh my, bro. Unfortunately, it looks like this will be the last iPhone mini. Fingers crossed, they keep this form factor around in some way. Maybe it'll take over as the new SE model, but I was really wanting to see a pro model at this size. Oh well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Excuse me. There it goes. There. Bye bye truck. Even though sales numbers weren't sky high, the phone itself was not a failure. There are still a lot of people that have pushed through the skepticism to join the bandwagon. As for me, this is where I'm at, for now anyway. As someone who always went for the biggest, baddest, most powerful, and feature-packed, it's crazy to see how a phone not much bigger than a deck of playing cards brought me back down to earth. So what do you think of the iPhone mini? Do you have one or are you looking into possibly picking one up? Let's talk about it in the comments. If you made it to this point of the video, you have successfully survived a whole session of me rambling for entirely way too long. You are the best, I appreciate you. Comment potato if you are a part of the potato gang. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll talk to you later and thank you so much for watching.